You are finally visiting the Eiffel Tower. It's a sunny day and the view is clear. Let's just say you couldn't have chosen a better day to go. Except that when you arrive, your guide has a little surprise in store for you. He says, oh no, we are not going up the tower. We are going under it. Your confused look makes the guide add, sorry, but you booked the alternative tour. So you're visiting the Eiffel Tower's bunker. Few people know this, but there is a network of underground tunnels beneath the famous Tour Eiffel. Lucky for you, we'll get a tour of them today. Heading down the stairs in the south pillar of the tower, you see a closed green door. The whole thing looks so surreal. First, because you've literally just found out about it. And second, well, because it looks like you're facing platform nine and three quarters or even Narnia's magic wardrobe. What's behind that green door? You think to yourself. You step inside and, uh-oh, this doesn't look like a 20th century bunker. Actually, the main hallway looks like the inside of a hospital, so white and sterile. Today, much of the old bunker is used as food storage. I know, it's not that exciting, but in one of its rooms, time does seem to have stopped. Look, the elevator's machine house. Now, these aren't your typical elevators. These were some of Eiffel's prized innovations when he built the tower. Gustav Eiffel used the Eiffel Tower as a startup lab for personal innovations. And the hydraulic elevators you're looking at now were one of those. Keep in mind that the tower was built in 1889, so these types of things weren't too common. These sturdy iron boxes had to lift visitors 380 feet above ground, and that's no joke. The funny thing, though, is that Eiffel's hydraulic elevators are more trustworthy than the modern elevators used at the Tour Eiffel today. Apparently, the 100-year-old elevators break down much less. I guess a good job is in order for Mr. Eiffel. You may or may not know this, but Eiffel's Iron Lady was only meant to stand for 20 years. It was built for the World's Fair, and the construction process was quite impressive. I mean, they managed to build this iron giant in two years. But Eiffel didn't want his construction to be torn down, so he kept inventing ways of prolonging its life. That's why the Eiffel Tower became home to so many different projects. The bunker is one of them, of course, but the construction also became home to a wireless telegraph station at the top of the tower. You can see some of its memorabilia down here in the bunker. Fun fact, the French liked the idea of using the tower for broadcasting, so they continue using it to this day. The bunker and the tunnels surrounding it were kept a state secret for nearly 70 years, and there are still many mysteries revolving around them like the speculation that perhaps one of these tunnels leads directly to the French École Militaire, all the way on the other side of the Champ de Mars. But these aren't the only underground tunnels that exist in Paris. Have you ever heard of the catacombs? Scary name, huh? And they are a bit scary indeed. It just depends on the part of the catacombs you choose to visit. There are over 200 miles of these tunnels under Paris. We're basically talking about a city under a city. The construction of the catacombs started in 1774, and now they serve as an ossuary. Yep, I told you it was scary. But since you're already in Paris, make sure to check out this amazing attraction. The most famous catacomb for tourists is the one beneath the Donfer Rachereau Square in the 14th district. Going down there is an experience in itself. It's dark, and the ventilation isn't great. The main attraction is strolling alongside miles and miles of walls filled with bones. This special feature doesn't bother some people, <laughs> but it sure bothers me, though. <laughs> in the 19th century, the catacombs started being used as a cultural hotspot for plays and concerts. But this usage of the underground tunnels didn't stay limited to earlier centuries. People are using it today for several purposes, from secret parties to underground movie theaters. 
Can you imagine a fully equipped restaurant and popcorn bar ready to receive people eager to watch their favorite movies underground? Paris might have surprised you with all of its hidden underground secrets, but it's time to head back home to New York City. Inspired by your latest trip, you decide to do some research on the New York underground. And guess what? All your life, you've been missing out on exploring half of your city, the half that's hidden under your feet. This tour starts above ground. You're wandering around the posh Lexington and Park Avenues. If you look up toward the skyline, you'll see the famous Waldorf Astoria Five Star Hotel, where many celebrities have stayed, including John Lennon, Yoko Ono, and presidents such as FDR. That's why the hotel used a secret infrastructure to sneak people inside and out. Under the building, a tunnel known as Track 61 connects the Waldorf Astoria to Grand Central Station. The track was deactivated in the late 70s, but some people say that Andy Warhol threw a party there in the 60s. I bet that was something else. For the next part of our visit, we'll have to take the subway uptown. We'll get off at 125th Street and find ourselves on the scenic waterfront of Riverside Park. Here, you'll find abandoned tracks of an old metro line. The tracks will lead us into an underground graffiti gallery, AKA the Freedom Tunnel. The tunnel is named after a graffiti artist from the 80s who was commonly known as Freedom. Exploring the area, we'll see over 40 pieces of graffiti that he painted over 15 years, including spray paints of James Dean, the Mona Lisa, and even a self-portrait of Freedom himself. Moving on, let's wander around the northern part of NYC Island for a bit. Walking in Van Cortland Park will feel like hiking upstate, but believe me, you're still in the city. Along the path, you'll encounter some big ventilation towers made of stone. These towers used to be part of New York's infrastructure. They make up the remains of what was once the Croton Aqueduct. In the 1800s, the city's water supply flowed through a 41-mile underground tunnel all the way from the Croton River upstate to Bryant Park in Midtown Manhattan. Oh yes, I should tell you, Bryant Park wasn't always a park. Instead, it housed a colossal stone structure that looked pretty much like an Egyptian building. This four-acre structure served as the city's water reservoir. It even had a pathway on top so that people could enjoy a nice afternoon stroll looking at the reservoir's crystalline water. Now, all this exploring might have made you hungry, but don't worry. Our next stop has a delicious treat. We'll have to leave Manhattan and make our way to Brooklyn. In case you didn't know, New York City is made up of five boroughs. Manhattan, Queens, Bronx, Staten Island, and Brooklyn. And here it is, Crown Heights. That's our stop. Would you believe me if I told you that beneath these streets lie caves full of aging cheese? How very Parisian of them. To get down there, you'll have to make your way through a century-old building that now works as an office space. Maybe wave hi to the hardworking people. And disappear into one of the stairways that will take you 30 feet below the ground. You won't need a flashlight for this one. The caves are bright and renovated and can hold up to 28,000 pounds of cheese. But hey, it might stink. That's the main reason cheesemakers decided to use underground tunnels to age cheese in the first place. I have to say, I just love exploring the underground of famous cities. We'll have to continue this some other time. See ya!